Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo's ridiculous attempt to blame the Jasper fire on climate change has completely backfired. Shocking new info just revealed how badly he messed up. Turns out, Gilbo got clear warnings years ago about dangerous fuel buildup around Jasper and did nothing about it. Now he's trying to dodge responsibility by vaguely blaming climate change aggression. Seriously. A former senior park planner spilled the beans on how Gilbo's Parks Canada bosses let piles of deadwood build up, ignoring fire warnings. And yet, Gilbo has the nerve to claim they did everything they reasonably could have done. Yeah, right. The evidence shows he totally dropped the ball. The planner even shared that the Parks Canada fire chief admitted they were so good at stopping fires that they just let dead wood pile up. This negligence led to 30% of Jasper going up in flames. And Gilbo is praising their forest management? He's either clueless or thinks we're all fools. Blaming climate aggression doesn't hide the fact that his own terrible leadership prioritized extreme climate ideology over public safety. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Canada's Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo is trying to pull a fast one by blaming climate change for the massive Jasper wildfire. But let's be real, there's clear evidence that federal mismanagement under the Liberals played a big part in this disaster. When asked why there weren't enough controlled burns to prevent the wildfire, Gilbo dodged the question and falsely claimed his government's forest management efforts helped reduce the damage. But the truth is, Gilbo was warned two years ago that Parks Canada wasn't doing enough to manage the dead trees piling up in Jasper National Park. Yet here he is, absurdly saying that Parks Canada did everything reasonably could have done, even though more than 30% of Jasper went up in flames because of the government's negligence. It's like he's living in an alternate reality. I want to begin by recognizing the incredible work done by the dedicated staff from all levels of government to manage this really difficult situation. Throughout, I've been in close contact with Parks Canada, my counterparts in the province of Alberta, as well as British Columbia, been in close contact with Mayor Ireland and other federal ministers, most notably Minister Arjit Sajjan. The individual stories of bravery and hardship are something Canadians will always remember. This was the single largest fire in Jasper National Park history. What many may not know is that Parks Canada staff housing was located in the southwest end of town. That means that many Parks Canada staff who've been managing the situation have been doing so knowing their homes will, were lost in the blaze. Similarly, Mayor Ireland hasn't flinched from his leadership, his hard work, despite having lost his home. We cannot thank them enough for stepping up to your emergency duties when facing such personal challenges. You all exemplify the extraordinary degree of professionalism and service, which makes Parks Canada the organization that it is. Je suis très touché par tous ces exemples de courage et de persévérance ici, malgré ces temps très difficiles. Les employés de Parc Canada ont travaillé d'arrache-pied, alors même qu'ils savaient que leur maison était détruite par les flammes. Aujourd'hui, nous saluons leur professionnalisme et leurs efforts sans relâche pour nous protéger des feux de forêt. Despite such hardship, it is worth celebrating that we have not reported any injuries or casualties. Around 358 structures, or roughly 30% of the town, was lost to the fire. But inversely, around 70% of the town was saved. Years of preparation, forest management, simulated evacuations, and firefighting efforts paid off. The number one focus is the community. I'm happy to report that all the fires within the community have been put out. Crews are now bringing power back on and looking to prepare the community for a stage re-entry, although there are no firm timelines for when that occur. Crews are also doing a great job extending the buffer zone around the community to about three kilometers. Beyond that, they are still 
active wildfires, which threatened the community. Teams underground are working very hard to stabilize the wildfire situation throughout Jasper National Park over the coming three days before weather forecasts predict heightened fire risks. And while rail service has slowly resumed, Transport Canada reported that the rail backlog will take an estimated 15 to 20 days before operations fully return to pre-fire levels nationwide. Everyone right now is thinking about Jasperites who have been impacted. On Friday, the federal government announced we would match any donation made to the Red Cross along with the province. That means your donation is worth triple the value. We encourage Canadians to send support. The Jasperites and all those impacted, my main message today is that our government is fully behind you and will be for as long as it takes for your town to recover. Nous allons continuer de déployer toutes les ressources à notre disposition pour contenir cet incendie. Nous sommes en discussion avec le gouvernement de l'Alberta pour offrir tout le soutien nécessaire sous toutes ses formes aux personnes touchées et démarrer les efforts de reconstruction sans délai. And once we get past fighting this fire, we're eager to figure out how we can start rebuilding the community and supporting those who have been impacted. We're speaking closely to the province as well as the town about coordinating financial supports. As many on the ground will tell you, the cooperation between all levels of government has been incredible. The rapid evacuation was a testament of that cooperation. As Mayor Arlen has pointed out, the problem was not for lack of coordination or resources, but because they were facing a raging inferno that defied conventional firefighting tools. The province of Alberta was already part of the firefighting response with Parks Canada and the municipality of Jasper, as well as other agencies. No requests for assistance went unmet. And we will fully support the province's request for assistance for this fire and the many, many others still ongoing across the province. Moving forward, Parks Canada's officials will also be embedded within Alberta's emergency management operations. Jasper is a parc national emblematic and so for the bonnes reasons. Ici, au cœur d'un paysage montagneux spectaculaire, il s'agit d'un endroit vraiment spécial pour des millions de Canadiens et Canadiennes et des personnes de partout dans le monde. Les visiteurs ont souligné la beauté spectaculaire de ce parc. Jasper National Park and the community of Jasper hold a special place in all our hearts. We must work together to get that back as soon as possible, restore the community of Jasper and the lives and businesses impacted by this terrible event. Thank you. Merci. Yobo's dodging responsibility is just typical of the arrogance and lack of accountability in Trudeau's crew. Jasper was a disaster waiting to happen with that huge pine beetle infestation, and yet Gilbo's team ignored all the warnings about needing controlled burns. Even though the 2022 Jasper National Park Management Plan, which he signed off on, called for it, the psychic just didn't care, leaving the park primed for catastrophe. Now Gilbo is trying to gaslight the public, pretending he didn't see this disaster coming. He's out here blaming aggressive climate change for a wildfire that his own failure to act helped cause. It's wild to hear him praise Parks Canada's forest management, even though they completely dropped the ball on recommended prescribed burns. If I may add uh, just a few elements, um, Parks Canada has been taking care of, of Jasper National Park now for almost a century. The, the park was, was officially, became an official national park in, in 1930. We have, as both Ron and I have mentioned, we have Parks Canada staff who, who live there, who call Jasper their, their home, um, quite a number of them. And, and to think that over all those decades, we would not have deployed all of the resources necessary to try and do everything that is humanly possible to protect a town from a, from a forest fire is simply, simply not, not, not true. Um, Ron talked about prescribed burns, clearing dead trees, clearing a wide buffer zone around, around the town of, of, of Jasper. But as we are seeing in Canada and all around the world, we are seeing more and more aggressive forest fires. And we certainly saw that in the summer of 2023. Um, and, and this is what we were faced with. And the fact that we were able to protect 70% of the town speaks to all of those measures we, we have put in place over, over the years and frankly, 
decades. Ron talked about uh, FireSmart. FireSmart is now a national program uh, for which Jasper was one of was one of the inspiration. What we do around the country to protect town and cities from forest fires was inspired largely by 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 what we've been doing in in Jasper all these years for all these years. His whole act is just more proof of why people are so fed up with Trudeau's liberal crew. Gil Bo's climate change scapegoating is a blatant attempt to distract from the real issue, the incompetent handling of forest management by liberal agencies like Parks Canada. Local experts warned about the buildup of dead wood, but they ignored it. And yet, Gil Bo still has the nerve to say they did everything they could. This whole situation just reeks of the arrogance that's become a hallmark of Trudeau's government. Gilbo is trying to mislead Canadians, thinking his status will shield him from accountability. He doubles down on his lies, even going so far as to praise the same Parks Canada officials who let the fire risk build up due to negligence. It's infuriating to hear him lecture about climate change, knowing he ignored clear warnings from senior foresters about the need for preventative action in Jasper. His political spin is insulting, treating Canadians like they can't see through his excuses. The Liberals' obsession with being woke is blinding them to real issues, and we're the ones paying the price when things go wrong. Like his boss Trudeau, Gilbo is quick to point fingers, but never at himself. He's blaming climate change for losing 30% of Jasper, not the constant mismanagement by the Liberals. Gilbo's blatant lies are a lame attempt to cover up the laziness at Parks Canada. But honestly, his dishonesty just makes it clearer how out of touch the Liberals are with the messes they've created. Not only that, but Gilbo's arrogant stonewalling and climate change scapegoating over the Jasper wildfire disaster just got even more outrageous. A former senior park official, Peter Scholes, has come forward with some jaw-dropping revelations about what's been going on behind the scenes. Scholes, who was a senior planner for Jasper National Park back in 2008, spilled the beans on some serious negligence and how radical activists have pretty much taken over Parks Canada under the Liberals. He paints a pretty scary picture of spineless bureaucrats being pushed around by activists who have no clue about forestry. According to Scholes, Parks Canada's own fire chiefs had top-notch suppression tactics, but they were being ignored and dangerous fuel loads of deadwood kept piling up. Apparently, Gilbo's ministers wouldn't listen to the local experts who were shouting for prescribed burns or clearing to prevent this kind of catastrophe. Scholes also shared how these extreme environmentalists were against any tree removal to the point of calling it murder. Their over-the-top antics scared Parks Canada away from following science-based policies to lower the wildfire risk with controlled burns. Scholes openly confessed that the Parks Canada wildfire chief at the time told him in a January 2008 meeting, We have become so good at controlling and stopping fires that we just build up dead wood supplies. Scholes said, I did my best to support what I had been told when I was developing land use policy for Jasper National Park. This included attempts to clear out dead wood and conduct prescribed burns. Scholes added, But I found that the manager of land use planning was unresponsive to those concerns and the superintendent himself was unresponsive. There was enormous amounts of dead fall, some dead trees but mainly branches that had fallen off. This becomes very dry timber and it's very well aerated because it's all built up gradually over the years and it's not compressed in any way. You could light a match and it's going to practically explode. I know that because I participated in some of those transects and I saw it for myself. The former planner paints a pretty bleak picture of what's going on behind the scenes at Parks Canada, describing a culture that's been hijacked by eco-extremists, including our environment minister. According to him, good forest management practices are actively being sabotaged, which he says led directly to the tinderbox conditions that caused the wildfire to wipe out 30% of Jasper. Scholes basically calls out Trudeau's government for letting radical green voices dictate policy, putting public safety at risk. He claims that Parks Canada managers were ignoring on-the-ground realities like the pine beetle infestation and instead were obsessed with ridiculous ideas like building up dead wood supplies. This whole situation just shows that Gilbo's team cared more about pushing their climate agenda than actually doing something practical. They totally ignored the increasing fire risk because they were too busy keeping the activists happy which led to the disaster we saw last week. It's a pretty harsh look at how reckless their approach has been. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Gilbo deliberately misleads people to dodge blame? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.